Hey everyone, it's Miss Quiet Queen and welcome back to the Quiet Queen Project. I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you cried? When was the last time you cleansed your spirit? Now some people think that they look at crying as a sign of weakness, um, instability, but it's not true at all. Crying is not negative. Crying can be used for as a weapon. Oh yeah. Because when you cry, what is going on inside of you is your spirit is recognizing spirit. That's what I'm being told. Crying cleanses, cleanses the soul. You know, when you get so bogged down with stress and depression and responsibility, it can be a lot. And then to compound it all, um, don't feel like you're not being appreciated at work or at home. Um, I'm bringing this up because... I understand that a lot of people are going through the same thing, especially um, right now during this ascension process, process, we're all going through a lot of the same things, especially those of us who have the intentions of Mother Earth at heart, who have the best intentions for humanity, period. Sorry, my foot is getting cold. Um... Yes. So when you cry, you are releasing um what's the word I'm looking for? The vices that clamp. See, this is what I believe. This is my personal hypothesis. I think crying is the soul's way of telling you I hurt. I'm in pain. Okay? When Somebody hits your hand. Okay, yeah, that hurts. And you can cry from it. But what about when your highest self is hurting? Yeah. We are disconnected from our higher self to the point where we look at our higher self as a different person. As separate. Because we are disconnected from our higher, pers our higher self. And this is done on purpose. Because when you decide to incarnate here, come back here physically, you volunteered to lose some of your memory. Why? Well, the coming down to the 3D, you lose in power. Because 3D, physical, the physical form is weaker than all your other astral selves. You have several astral selves, beloved. We all do. Those of us that are, anyway, we all do. <laughs> you have several. You exist on many planes. I've already told you all this before. I'll go ahead and talk about some of the things that I have talked about before because I do understand that some some of my videos that I spoke on, um, different things are not up. Or sometimes they're so far down the line that people just don't go all the way and look at all my videos. But I did notice that some of my videos were taken off. They have been, I don't know where they are. Um, I never erased them, but they're not up on my channel. But anyway, crying is a tool to cleanse your soul. So when you are feeling bogged down, when you're feeling heavy, when you're feeling depressed and disappointed, um, go ahead and cry and let it out. It's not a bad thing. People think, oh, I'm crying. That means I'm sad. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're sad. Just go ahead and cleanse yourself. Now, I got a message from someone today about 20 hours ago. Um, I accidentally erased their message. I didn't mean to do that. But they were saying that they're homeless and they needed my help. I don't exactly know 
how you need or want my help. And this, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm not going to mention that person's name largely to the fact I don't remember the name. But I wouldn't anyway. And I'm bringing this up because I used to be homeless. And some of you already know that. Um, how did I get through it? I cried a lot. And I noticed that when I cried, I felt better spiritually. I was still sad physically, disappointed and depressed physically, but I got all of that aggression out. I remember I had a van. My children, I had temporarily lost custody of my children due to someone causing me to lose my job. Not going to get into that because I don't want to go back to that headspace. Um, so they lived with relatives. Not going to get into that right now. But I remember being in my van. It was a very, um, it's kind of raggedy van. Uh, it used to um, um, leak oil a lot. Can you give us a bath when you're dying? We're really sticky from what? We were going to just sit on the couch, but somehow there was something sticky on the floor. We stepped on, our feet got sticky. Okay. And, okay. And, and my pants got sticky. Y'all, I have a family hand. and that never stops. I And my hand got sticky. Okay. Will y'all go, please? Mm -hmm. here. Okay, so one day I will try to be better at doing videos more appropriately, <laughs> uh, more professionally. But right now, this is what I have. And I do want to build this channel. Decided I'm going to go ahead and try to build this channel as much as I can. Not going to worry about financial compensation i'll just rely on the generosity of those of you who love my videos i need i'm going to get back to what i was talking about i need um i just need things and i'll try to remember that after i tell you about this so my this my van was leaking oil um and it just had a lot of things wrong with it but that's where i lived i remember um just different just trying to scout around trying to find different places to park so that i could get some sleep and the way i hand one of the things that i was going through what made me really really cry is one day i was just having an okay day being homeless okay i'm homeless that's kind of jacked up right i remember sitting in the back seat and going, having to go into McDonald's with a big old water container, people looking like, what is she doing? Or into a laundry mat, actually, and putting water in this big water container, you know, the real, the, the two gallon, two and a half gallon containers, and going back to my car and just pouring water all over myself. You know, I laid the plastic garbage bag down on the floor in the seat so seat and the floor won't get soaking wet and I would just pour it all over my face all over my body then pour had liquid soap and pour that all over I made sure it was someplace private and put things up against the window and that's how I cleaned myself and one day I was just doing that you know because you, you have to clean up every day right and then one day I looked at what I was doing and thinking about what I was doing and y'all I burst out into tears I was crying so much as I was pouring water on myself just crying shoulders shaking crying hard like I am this age and I have nothing how did I get to this point I want to say to all of you who are going through some stressful situation I'm telling you it can get better if you continue to claim the negative, then the negative is exactly what you're going to get. You have to say, I'm a good person. I have a great life. I know it's really hard to say it while you're sitting in the back seat pouring water over yourself doing your own man-made shower. I was sad. I was depressed. I was disappointed. I was so unhappy to the point where I would think about Oh my gosh, I'd be glad when I can pay a bill. It must be nice to go somewhere and pay your light bill, your phone bill. Why did I feel that way? Because I didn't have a home. You know, that's, you see, you're thinking when you're homeless, when you are at the bottom, the lowest you can think, 
of, the lowest you can be, the smallest things become your goals. Now, nobody wants to pay bills, but when you homeless, damn, you look at like, I wish I did have some uh, bills to pay. That means I'm at least, least I'm living in a house, at least I'm stable, you know? <sighs> Please forgive the way I speak and everything. Sometimes I just, I don't word things right, but I just wanted to let you all know that. And to this person who's saying that they're homeless, listen. This is what you need to do. When I was homeless, it's back in the early 2000s. Technology wasn't as rampant as it is right now. It wasn't as, I don't know, the word I'm looking for. You know, it wasn't as well off, for the lack of a better phrase. Nowadays, you can Google anything, okay? Um, let me suggest something. If you don't know where to go if you're homeless, you try to Google and find homeless shelters. Um, you can even go to a police station or a fire station in your city and ask them for help. A lot of people don't know that. The police station and the fire station, regardless of who you are or what you look like, they work for us. These are facets and departments that works for the community. That's why we pay city taxes. They are our employees. City workers work for the citizens of the city. So if you are homeless, you don't know where to go, you got kids with you, and you were afraid that somebody going to take your children away because you don't have no place to go, go to, tell them, look, you know, now some people, now look, y'all, black people, if you go to a police station, it may not always work out the way you want because they don't favor us. That's just how it is at the moment. Go to a fire station, go to the YMCA. If you can't find any relatives that will help you, and sometimes the relatives are the worst people to go to when you're homeless. Because they feel like because they are your relatives that that gives them the license to lecture you and tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. You're living in my house, so I get to tell you what to do. I had I was living in my sister's house um, after she came and got me because I was living in my van and I appreciate her. I appreciate her for allowing me to live there, but her children at the time were still minors. And I noticed they were bossing me around. They would say, don't put that there. And they were like in junior high and in elementary. Don't do that. Don't do this. Mama don't like that. Mama don't like, and I was tell her, my sister, you know, your children talking to me any kind of way. Well, this is their house. So I got really, really upset because I feel like I wouldn't allow my children to talk to anybody that way. You're grown, they're not. I don't care if this is your house or not. That's an adult. But see, what you have to understand is everybody ain't going to do things the way you do things. I had to teach myself that. And being homeless taught me a whole lot of lessons, y'all taught me a whole lot and I love my nieces and nephews yeah they were rude they were snobby and I felt like they were way down here they did they were embarrassed of me you know because their mom never went through that why did you go through that but as children you don't know what the hell I'm going through in my life you don't know and I don't owe you an explanation but my sister felt well that's their house so they can say whatever they want they live there I don't believe in that so I had to use that as another stepping stone. Okay, you got to get up and do what the hell you got to do. So after that welcome felt um, was worn out, I went and lived with my other sister. And then she had several children. And after a while, it was, you know, you can't keep living on somebody's floor. After a while, they'd be like, okay, now what you going to do? You know? So... You can't feel sorry for yourself. You just got to get up and do it and recognize the fact that this is what you asked for. This is what you agreed to. When I went into contemplation to try to understand myself and the path that I chose, I remember distinctly being offered 
this or that. I remember going before the council, before coming down here, saying, okay, now in this lifetime, you can either be born in this family, in this way, and go through these group, this group of, of um, situations, or this one. They give you a choice. So, I remember um, choosing this life and choosing some of the, the situations that I go through. Did you know every single situation that you go through is not preordained? Because you have free will. So you have a free will to choose either this or that when you're here. And depending on your choices would dictate the path and would dictate the situations you go through. Does that make sense? So I chose to be homeless, but not necessarily homeless on the street. So, or Homeless always in somebody's basement or homeless in the YMCA. You know what I mean? I chose to be homeless. And then from there, um, I had to make my own decisions of where I would go. I, I, I hope that makes sense to y'all. Try to follow me. But anyway, I wanted to give some insight to that person who um, commented and said that they were homeless. Um yeah go and put your um city to work for you like i said the fire department or the police department um and tell them i need to talk to somebody let me speak to a judge there's nothing we can do that's probably what they're going to say because they want to blow it off no don't let them blow you off i don't have nowhere to go and since all of the land really ain't nobody's land anyway to be claiming no government really has the right to tell you to pay taxes on the land it ain't your land anyway the native americans were here in america specifically living life living life off the land it is a god-given right to live on the land and just enjoy the fruits of the land. The fruits of your own labor for living off the land. And then here come these, um, oh, these oh, societies that say, oh, we're just going to take it. Just take, 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 take. They take the land, put a stamp on it and say, it's ours. You got to pay us to be here now. Who in the heck do you think you are? It is so annoying. And the same group of people are over in the Congo raping the land from oil, um, titanium, uh, whatever it is. You know, everything, the whole world is living off of Africa. The whole world is extracting over there, just taking stuff, taking stuff, and taking stuff. And they pacify the, the corrupt leaders over there by throwing them a bone every now and then. Let us come over here and just rape, rape, rape. There's an endless supply of oil and all kinds of things over in Africa. And the American government, the British government, the Australian government, the Russian government, the Chinese government, all these governments are over there raping Africa. And they want you to think that Africa is a poor continent. Look at all these people. Don't have nothing to eat. That's an illusion. And it's a damn shame for it to be so rich in everything out there. And these kids over here with big bellies and flies landing on them. And they can't hardly move or open their mouth. If you can do something about it, if you can change, you need to do it. I told myself today that I promise to keep myself in a higher vibration and a higher mood. And I don't want to think about negative things because when you think about negative stuff and you think about stuff that you don't like, you bring your own vibration down. 
And when you bring your own vibration down, you are inviting negative entities and energies to come and suck the life force out of you. And in my personal opinion, my personal hypothesis, that feels like a sin. If there is such a thing. So, I have so much to tell you guys. And we're going to do another video. I think I'm going to be cranking up the videos today. I have a book. Now, somebody else was on my live. And she asked a question. She said, Queen, can you give me a book to read on angels? Now, I brought this book up to you guys before. And I'm going to do it again because I don't know if that video is up. I don't know if it's going to be. Oh, good. It's called Spirit Guides and Angel Guardians. It's by Luella. I love this company right here. They are my favorite supernatural um, publisher. Uh, you can go to www.luellenworldwide.com. And they're at facebook.com, Llewellyn um, Books. This was only $13 in the U.S., $14.95 in Canada. Um, yeah, can you see? Okay. Now I want to read the back for you just a little bit, just the first paragraph. I love this book. This book is very old, but I really love it. I should have a book club and I should contact uh, Llewellyn and let them know you should sponsor some of my videos. Speaking, this is a sponsored video, by the way. Um, well, no, I'm going to make my next one. I need to do some editing, but I'll make the next one a sponsored video. But anyway, let me read this to you guys. It says, you are not alone. Oh, let me read to you who, who wrote it. It's by Richard Webster. He's one of my favorite authors. Richard Webster wrote a book on um, candle magic. Oh, I love that book. It says, everyone has a support team of spirit helpers. They are already there for you, granting protection and offering subtle guidance. But when you cautiously, oh, I'm sorry, consciously work on establishing a relationship with them, you open yourself to new opportunities and possibilities with the assistance of your spirit guides and angel guardians. You can find inner strength, overcome an addiction or illness, answer important questions, or tap hidden creative talents. Mm -hmm. So that is by just by connecting with your guardian angels. Now, don't let the core, hardcore Christians intimidate you or fool you. Because I've had some people come to me and say, you only need to go to Jesus. Okay, your very Bible, they said you only need to go to Jesus. You don't go to no angels. Can't no angels do anything for you. Ain't no such thing as angels. But you read a Bible, and in the Bible they talk about angels. And you're telling people... Don't call on your angels. Only call on Jesus. I just don't understand Christians. And I'm happy that I am not. Um, snowed by that anymore. So. In this book. It also. Um, shows you how to work with the archangels. And how to find certain numbers. Because uh, numerology. And astrology. And um, the nine choirs of angels, this is all relative to um, our spiritual growth. All right, so go ahead and get this book. Um, I'll put some links down below so that you can click on it and uh, go check out the Wildland Books. They have so many great authors that they represent. And... Um, yeah, go ahead and check them out. Thank you so much for listening. I want to thank everybody for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't already, please do. Um, and if you have subscribed, please go and check and make sure that you are still subscribed. Sometimes YouTube unsubscribes um, my subscribers. And make sure you hit the bell button because sometimes they take that off too. I don't know why. I'm not even going to worry about it anymore. And I also want to ask you guys for some help. Um, 
At first I was a little too proud, but because they changed the, I used to get a check for doing YouTube videos, but because they changed things, I don't get anything. And then they made it so hard where I can't make any money. Um, it's ridiculous how they do it. And they still hold back my, my channel and I can't, I can't make any money off of YouTube anymore. I mean, they say I can, but it's going to be, it's really, really hard. So I do have a Patreon. I do have a PayPal. I'm not sure how to use my Patreon. I don't know what happened. I'm going to go back and do another one, but I do have a PayPal. I know that's my daughter talks about me and my son. Nobody uses PayPal. Well, I do. And there's still people that use it. And I understand it. So I use what I understand. I need computer. I need another laptop. This one is has had so many viruses sent to it, even when I have virus protection. Um, it's really raggedy. It's tearing up. I want to start using my camera because I have a really nice camera that would give you a really good picture. Better than the ones you see now. And this one is kind of grainy. Um, but I, you know, it takes money cause I need flash drives. I need memory cards. I just need stuff, you know? And I get depressed. I'm going through depression right now. Sometimes my depression, some days is so bad. I can't even get out of bed. I have no interest. I mean, I do, but I don't. Y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? I need help. And then there are people out there who have money. I feel kind of guilty. I feel embarrassed, but I want to help. But I can't, y'all. Um, I don't... When I work... You know, money is slim. My husband, um, had he was on his job for 30 years. He got really, really ill. Y'all remember when he got really sick, it was touch and go. He hasn't been back to work six, since. He's on a um, fixed income. And it's just get hard for us. I don't always work continuously. Because I have physical elements as well. I'm in a better physical condition than my husband is. So I'll go ahead and work for a while. And then I stop. Because I really feel like I don't want to work for anybody. I want to work for myself. I want to continue to make videos and, and do my blogs and do my writing. And I do my writing. I haven't published a book yet. Everything costs money. It takes money to make money. I just wish that for those who have extra just share i promise i promise god i promise myself i promise the universe when i am when i am when i am in a better condition like if i had millions of dollars i don't even have to have millions of dollars i could just have a hundred thousand dollars some of you gonna have some money too because if you are someone who is trying to wake people up is trying to help Mother Earth. I mean, I want to get out there and buy trash bags and just go out there and just pick up garbage and, you know, donate to homeless shelters and things like that. All this takes money. I want to do this, but I can't always do it because if I have to go to work every single day, um, it stresses me out. My body hurts. I have a zero tolerance for snitches and bitches at work, y'all, I can't because I will end up getting fired every single time. I'm too old for that. I can't go through that anymore. I won't. So if you are someone who owns a lot of money or who just don't mind helping, please help me. Please help me. I'll show you the receipts after I did it, after I get whatever it is that I need. I, I need to get started, but it takes dividends. Now, in a few weeks after my vacation, because we are going on vacation, I plan to come back home and hit the pavement. If I don't have what I need financially from donations, um, I'm going to go back to work. I'm going to go back to work anyway. 
for myself. But, you know, y'all, I just, just need help, you know. And there are some of you who are doing okay financially. And you want to be incognito. You want to be anonymous. That's fine. But what's the sense of having money if you can't help people that's really trying to help humanity? Why? Why does the inner... The, the those who run the entertainment business tell the entertainers um you will be chastised if you help people if you just give your money away we don't want you to do that why do they get to dictate what you do with your shit that's just like here in this house where we live we own this house but we don't really own it if I got to continuously ask the city council, can I put this fence up? Can I knock this wall down? In my house. It ain't my house. You see what I'm saying? It's all an illusion so that the 1%, the selfish ass 13 families, Illuminati, whoever the heck they are, can keep control. And I, I want to break out of this bind that I'm in, but it takes loot because in here in 2019 we still use money in the future i have been i was able to connect with certain energies by channeling and what i discovered was in the near future i'm thinking 10 to 15 years from now and i hope to still be alive we won't need money in the near future it's true we're not going to need money there the collective the collectiveness is coming there's no more it will be no more individuality stuff everything will be done collectively because that's how the universe works so we're not going to need money and this is the reason why the dark forces are fighting so hard because they want us to stay dependent on paper money or card money, you know, credit. It's coming a, to a time where you ain't going to need money. You're going to have a chip in your wrist or somewhere in your neck and it's scanned. You get what you want. Something like that. I have to go into contemplation and, and um, ask exactly how that works. Okay. So if you have any questions, please leave, leave them below. I'm going to try to remember to put this down here on, on, on this video and um, my PayPal, I'll try to put that down as well. Go to PayPal, help me out, please, so that I can get more equipment to have a more professional YouTube channel. You know, they kind of have backdrops and they have really good camera with a really good vision and a good microphone. So I, I want to do some ASMR videos and just different things like that. If you can help me, please help me. I'm so embarrassed to ask you guys for help. It's either that or I'm just going to have to not do videos or quit altogether. And every time I tell myself, y'all know how many times I quit. Y'all don't know how many times I quit. But each time I get this fight with myself, my spirit team is like, no, you have to do this. Just go ahead and ask. Don't be too proud. And so that's what I'm doing. And if you know, if you can't help financially, um, that's okay. If you could just spew out, and I say spew for the lack of a better word, um, well wishes and send positive energy to me that so that maybe someday you know somehow i can get the things that i want if you don't have the finances to offer to me just offer me your love can i have your love can i have your support can i have your gratitude um you know and i'm going to keep on doing what i'm doing even if i don't get it because I know this is something that I'm supposed to do. And to all of my galactic family, to um, the Octarian Council, to the Palladian Council, 
to the Babylonian council, to the Anunnaki council, all of you who are listening, who watch the, who come to YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and you look and watch those in the spiritual community and you, um, you thumbs up, thumbs down, make a comment or not make a comment. If you're watching this and you want me to continue to do what I do, what else should I do? But ask you for help. You know, um, I want to continue to be a part of the ascension pro process for the entire world, for humanity, for Mother Earth, because I love Mother Earth so much. And I feel her energy every single day. Mother Earth has given me a great idea to develop. And I'll just say this much. It is a community center. I want to be a part of creating a community center. This is, I see this community center right now in my head, y'all. I would like to have at least a hundred acres of land to start this community center. A thousand acres would be more appropriate. So if anybody out there, you have some land you're sitting on, you're wealthy and you have land you're sitting on, you don't know what to do with it. You have an idea but you don't know how to get it started or you or you want to support an idea, please, quietqueenproject at yahoo.com is my email. Please <laughs> shoot me an email. There's this community center that I have in my head that I know it would do well. It is doing well on other realms because I already created it. I want to bring it into the, to the physical existence before any of it is too late thank you for listening i love you i truly do everybody stay in the light